Hello everyone and welcome to this video where I'm going to talk about kind of an advanced topic. It's not so much advanced as it is advanced to even be here. And what I'm talking about is touchscreen displays. So maybe this won't apply to a lot of people, but I did a lot of testing and I do want to talk about this because I came up with a system that may be new to some people, may be helpful because I've been struggling with it for a while and I consider myself relatively experienced with this. So what I'm talking about is multi-screen controls. Now I did talk about this briefly in my video for the Alta ship that I just developed, the bulk carrier, and I kind of blew my own mind because I ended up with a system that could be controlled by two displays. Now you don't have this here and I just want to kind of show you my thought process. So the first thing I did was develop a microcontroller where I had one composite going to this screen. I could adjust it and the second one was just kind of like paired with it, feeding information from it, um, almost like mirrored but not the actual control screen. Then I devised a system where I can control the system but you have to toggle a button. So if this button is off, I can only use this display. I can't use this one here. If I toggle this one, I can only use this display here and not this one. Now, even with this system, just like this, you probably could make your way around it. And in essence, these would be in two different rooms. And what you would do is if you're not in the room, this would be paired with a uh, player detection meter, for example. And the second you come here, you can activate this one. The second you're out of the room, you can only activate this one. Now, works fine single player, but what happens if you have multiplayer people? How do they control this? Because they may be trying to press this and it won't work. Now, yeah, you could call it an override, and that's pretty much what I did. In the case of the box ship, you can see here, if you make your way down to this room and turn on the display, you then can actually set this to be the pusher, for example. Now, that's all great because this button's on, but what if you are in the bridge here? Well, by turning this button on, it overrides this system. But what will also happen is the second you step out of this room, if I go to that window back there, all these displays turn off. Thereby, control is automatically restored back down to the one I was here. So that's just a way to kind of mitigate the problem <laughs> rather than actually tackle it up front. But in the bulk carrier, I do just that. On my newest creation, I I'd thought about a system and I thought, how on earth can I actually get myself to operate this display or this camera system here, but also to be able to operate it from the bridge. And the solution, while simple in a way, it does require a bit of finesse. So I could change these displays and they would be changing them in the room in the forecastle. So they're not two microcontrollers. Yes, you could just do two microcontrollers in this case where it's just a camera, that's fine. But what if you have a system that you actually have to control? And by pressing this and this, you want to have the system in here matching. And if you turn this on or off, it also matches. So I devised a system and I thought that I want to share it with you. So yes, it's finicky and yes, maybe it won't apply to a lot of people, but I thought that it is something that I wanted to get out, get out there just because I ended up having to figure it out myself. Maybe others have done it and if they have, then kudos to them. Uh, but I have not. So what I'm going to start off with is a input just to prove my concept. But first of all, first and foremost, if you don't know how to make a touch screen, this video isn't for you. If you don't know how to make these Lua coding and all this stuff, this video is not for you. You could watch it for information purposes, but this is not a tutorial. This is just to show you how to get two displays working. Anyway, what I'm going to do here is when I was in the Lua script here, I found something interesting. I found that the touch screen itself uses these codes here. So it uses Boolean one to determine if it is pressed and it uses number three and number four to determine the position on the screen. So if this gray thing is the screen, you're clicking here, that's a coordinate. Here is a different coordinate. So with three and four and one, 
we can now extract these numbers. So what I did is I actually went to the display and then composite and I pulled out those numbers. So I wanted to get exactly what number is coming out of the display. So let's start with three, for example. It doesn't have to be both of them, but let's even just start with one here. And I'm just gonna put a display here with that number. So whenever we press it, it's gonna go to that display. So it starts off with zero, and as I tap it, you can see the number changes. So the number is actually changing through these systems. So depending on where you click it. Now, what's interesting is the number remains. I'm not gonna show you what I did for the first time around, but the first time around, what I did is I actually added my two numbers coming from my controller one and coming for, or coming from my display one and then coming from my display two. So in essence, you would just make yourself a new display node here, but that does not work. What you do when you do something like this is you don't end up with the right number. So just to prove that you click here and here, but now if you click here, you've now added the numbers. You have two numbers, it's twice as high in whatever instance, and now even it would not work because it won't register to the number you're trying to click. Now this is working because I'm not actually taking out of the feed, but in general it wouldn't be because you'd be sending the wrong coordinates. If I pulled, if I did this and then came back together with another composite function here, like this, and it would obviously be three, starting at channel three, it'd be three and four, and you'd bring them in like that, and that's what you plug into this, that won't work. You're gonna get a crazy number. So what does work? This system does. Now, at first it looks a little crazy, but bear with me for a second. So in essence, what I've done is I've taken my display one and I've taken my display two. Now, each of these displays, whether it's display one or display two, doesn't matter. We're extracting our channels one, channel three and channel four. That's a given, right? You're coming up with the channels and extracting them coming out of your displays. Now we're gonna bring them back in later, but that's not what we're gonna do right away. The first thing we're gonna have to do is get them stored in a memory function that is gonna forget it. The second we click the button, it's gonna store it and forget it. That's the key here because we can't have the numbers be stored as I showed you. So what we're gonna do, and starting actually with the on off function it's much easier we literally are just going to grab our channel one we're going to pulse it and the pulsing is going to be going down to the, to the memory set function but also the regular one is going to go on down to an or function which goes to composite channel one and merges in with the composite channel right but we're getting ahead of ourselves so the on off one is quite easy to mimic because it actually only registers when you're pressing it. So you don't even need to have a pulse. You just have them on and on going to the or function. But the key now really is these memory register functions. So like I said, you're going to want to take your composite three and composite four and put them into a memory register function that will set it the second we press the button one on that display, right? We're clicking this display. We set these coordinates by pressing on them and that sets it and vice versa for this one. So this one, again, you've pressed it, it pulses it. So toggle to push, even though you've only pushed, it doesn't matter. You just want it to do it for a split second. It's going to go on down to your memory functions and set them again, channel three and four. Now they're set. But how do we make it forget? Well, that's where this OR function comes in. Now the OR function will actually come from pressing this button or this button. So we're going to send composite one's pulse to the OR on both of these. And that OR function goes and just resets everything. Just a blanket statement. All of them get reset. So the second you press this, it actually sends this signal, but also it sends a pulse to reset it. After we've gathered our memory functions, remember they're only available for like a split second, we send them to the app, to the add function. And then through the add function, we send them back in to the composite. So now we've actually recovered ourselves 
and we've restored the two signals back into one. We've now stored our channel one, we've stored our channel three and our channel four. And that's what we ship into our microcontroller or Lua here. And those are these functions you see here. So this remaining part is your code, but this part here is what you would extract to then have both displays working at the same time. So this again, not of your concern, but all of this is. Now, I know I kind of breezed over that in a very <laughs> convoluted way, but long story short, you'll want to break up your displays into display one, display two. You'll want to put composite read on off channel one, composite read number three, composite read number four on both of them. Then we're going to need a pulse coming out of channel one for both of them and memory registers for our numbered signals. Then the pulse is going to set the function on that particular display and then an OR function from both pulses is what's going to reset it. Then the OR between the two on off channel ones goes directly to composite write on off channel one. And then all our memory functions go to the add functions and to here. So how does this look in practice? Well, I'll show you. We're going to plug in our display two. We're going to plug in our display one. Then our displays are these guys. Now I do have the old secondary display, kind of a remnant from the previous one I showed you, but it still has a purpose specifically if I want to just project, say a camera somewhere. So that's fine. And then we're just going to plug in our camera feeds just so you get a visual here, but that's specific to the microcontroller you're working with. And that's literally it. So with that done, we can spawn it into the game and you come across your display where now you can press this one or you can press this one and it operates them just the same. It could be in the same room. It could be across the ship. It doesn't matter. These displays are now going to register your clicking. And again, you can apply it to this one just the same way. That's actually what I did. I just took that first part of the code that I showed you that you can write out yourselves, this one here, and you can apply this to whatever other systems so you can have kind of a multi-use display system in various parts of your ship and end up kind of being able to control it from multiple areas. I just prefer that type of system. I like to be able to control things from multiple areas. It just does make the creation a little more polished and a little more user friendly. So thank you all for watching. Hopefully that wasn't too boring for those of you that aren't technical enough to make your own displays yet, but honestly, keep at it. If you keep studying the code, keep watching videos like this, you'll get there. And to those that hopefully this is useful, I hope you enjoy it. So thank you all for watching. Stay tuned for more videos. Stay tuned for creations and all kinds of stuff. Until next time, happy Stormworksing, everyone.